Howdy guys, lovely to see you all again. I was thinking about the untimely death of Ollie Herbert, uh, one of my favorite guitarists. I was like, you know what, I need to do a couple of uh, tribute lessons to that guy because he was such an important part of my guitar playing uh, in the early to mid 2000s and obviously still to this day. So we're gonna be looking at the solo from We Stand uh, by All That Remains and hopefully I'll get a couple more out. If you guys wanna leave uh, some requests for that, uh, other lessons as well by All That Remains, that would be lovely, I'll try and get on them. But anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at We Stand. Guys, before we get too excited, this song is in D standard, which goes D, G, C, F, A, D. So get yourself in tune and we'll get started. All right, guys, let's have a look at the first section. We're going to be doing the lower harmony of the solo. I'm going to start from 10 of the second string. I'm going to hit that twice and then I'm going to play 12, 13. At the end of that, I'm going to slide into 17 and hit it two more times. And that's all on the second string. Okay, after that I slide into 15 and then hit it three more times. So there's going to be the slide in and then three more picks. Similar idea, I slide into 12 but then there's just two picks after the slide. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three. We include the slide in that. So let's put that all together thus far and then we'll look at the crazy arpeggios that follow. Okay, then I work into this phrase. Let's slow that down. So I've got a bit of a strange arpeggio happening over here. It almost looks like an E minor, but I'm actually starting from the fourth string. So I'm gonna start off by playing seven of the fourth string and then hammering four, five on the third. And then from that point, I'm playing five of the second and then hammering three, seven on the first. From that point, I'm gonna slide over to 10 and then pull off to seven. So all together, from that point, I'm gonna reverse down, <coughs> excuse me, what will be an E minor seven arpeggio. So I'm pulling off 10, seven, playing eight of the second and nine of the third. And I'm just gonna ascend that back up the scale like this. So we're gonna go from that point, I'm gonna hit that 10 again and slide to 14. So let's take what we've got thus far of those arpeggios a little slower. Notice that I'm not doing a, a grace note slide there, nothing uh, too Josh Middleton-y or cacophony sounding. This um, whole lick will go out of time if you add in any grace note slide. So each note has a value, if that makes sense, and it all makes sense at the end of the, the section when we do it with tabs as well. You can. Uh, double check the timing on those. So I'm gonna slide from 10 to 14, then pull off back to 10, then hit 12 of the second string, and then hammer 10 to 14 again. At the end of that, I'm gonna go from a slide from 14 to 19, and then pull off to 15. It's very similar to just a basic three string E minor arpeggio. After I hit 17 of the second string, I'm gonna play 16 to 17 as a hammer on the third string. At the end of that, I'm playing 15 of the second string. So this is a pretty lengthy arpeggio sequence. Let's have a look what we've got thus far. After I've hit 15 of the second string, I was resolving to 16 of the third. And then I want to play 17 of the second back to 16 of the third. So it's going to go at the end of that, sliding into 14. That was ending on 14 of the third string. So we'll do the arpeggio section and then go right back to the start and put it all together. All 
All right, right back to the start now from 10 of the second string. Remember, we're working with the lower harmony and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. One more time with some tabs. All right, guys, let's have a look at the second section. I'm gonna start off with sort of a bit of a Tremi 16th note pulse thing here. I'm gonna be playing nine of the third string. I'm gonna hit that six times. And then I'm gonna to go to 11 and hit it four times and 12 and hit it four times. There's gonna be a bit of an interesting emphasis on the pulse. Hopefully that's making sense. Then I'm gonna do a grace note slide from 12 to 16. All together. After that, I work through this phrase. What I've got here is a pull off from 12 to 11 on the third. I hit that twice when I get there. And then I've got a pinch harmonic going in both directions. Obviously with a bit more distorted saturation, these squeals are gonna come through a little bit more aggressively. I'm going up and down, uh, I'm doing a bend and then just vibratoing the nine of the third string. So hopefully that's all making sense. After that, I work into this phrase. The start of that is just a basic uh, A minor arpeggio if we're in standard tuning, a five string from 12 of the fifth string. So I'm gonna start off with this. Let's slow that down. From the fifth string, I'm playing 12, and then 10, nine, 10, all the way to the second string. And from that point, I'm doing a hammer on pull off going 8, 12, 8 on the first string. And then as I climb up, I'm playing 10 of the second, 9 of the third, all together. Hopefully that's all making sense. At the end of that, I'm gonna slide from 10 to 13, and then do a hammer on 12, 13, 15 from the second string. At the end of that, so I've got, then I'm gonna quickly play 13 as a single note. Then a hammer on pull off 12, 13, 12, and then jumping to 14 of the third. Sort of go. Let's put the arpeggio in front of that. Hopefully that's all making sense. Then I go back to a relatively tremmy idea, but this time um, I'm only doing four 16th notes per sort of fret. So just straight groups of four. I'm going nine, 11, 12, 16, and there's four picks on each, all 16ths, obviously, or semi-quavers, if you're of British descent. At the end of that, big sexy bend from 19 of the third string. And that's the whole section. So let's go right back to the start, do it all again at a gentleman's pace, and then we'll do it again even slower with some tabs. We'll time with some tabs. All right, this is the last section and it is easily the most terrifying. It's just, oh my God, it's awful, but if you stick with me, we'll get through it together. It'll be some sort of um, emotional breakthrough therapy for all of us. So I'm gonna start off with this. Let's slow that down. I'm hammering 19, 20, pulling off 19, 15 on the first string. And then I'm gonna hit 19 again and pull off to 15. So we're gonna have six notes there. At the end of that, I'm doing a string skip by playing 17, 16 on the third. So we're gonna go. And those notes are gonna be picked. So we're gonna kind of drift between a little bit of shredding and a, a shitload of legato, if that makes sense. Sorry about the swear. And then we work into this. Let's slow that down. I'm gonna play a hammer on from 16 to 17 on the third and then 14, 16. At the end of that, I'm pulling off 17, 14 of the fourth. 
at the end of that, I'm picking 15, 14 on the fifth. So just mixing between legato and shredding uh, is a really cool way to get some different effects. Um, I was talking to a guy called Chris Brooks, if you guys want to check out his YouTube channel about a similar thing with uh, drifting between those dynamics. So Chris Brooks, check that guy out. Anyway, this is what we should have thus far. Hopefully that's all making sense. And then we're working into this big shreddy run that works into that uh, cheeky, um, what is it, sort of like a cross between legato and sweeping. So we've got this little part here. All right, let's slow that down. It's kind of working through a B Lockerian shape, if you will. I'm starting from 14 of the fifth string. I'm going to play 14, 15, 17 there, and also on the fourth. Then I'm going to jump to 14 of the third and back up to 15 of the fourth string. So all together. From that point, what I'm doing here, I'm going to 17 of the fourth string and then playing 14, 16 on the third, back up to 17 of the fourth. So it'll go. Okay, let's have a look what we've got thus far of the shreddy run. At the end of that, I'm going to be playing 14, 16, 17 on the third string and resolving that to 15 of the second string. Let's have a look at that whole shred run now. Hopefully that's all making sense. Smidge flat there. And then I work into these crazy arpeggio things. So let's slow this down. Basically, I'm kind of working through um, a C major seven, root third, fifth, major seven. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually starting from the descending part of it though. So I'm starting from 16 to 12 on the third string and then I play 14 of the fourth and 15 of the fifth. And then I work my way back up again. And then I hammer and pull that off when I get back to the third string. So we're gonna play. So I'm basically just doing a, a descend and an ascend of the C major seven arpeggio. I'm just adding in one more pull off at the end. And then it goes. So let's slow that down. It's gonna start off kind of E minor pentatonically. Such a word exists. I'm gonna do a pull off from 15 to 12 on the second string. 14 of the third back to 12 of the second. And then I pull off 17 to 12 and then play 14 of the third back to 12 of the second string. Sort of go. Then I jump to the first string, still staying with a very um, E minor pentatonic thought process. I'm pulling off 15 to 12 on the first, playing 15 of the second, then to 12 of the first. That's gonna give us this. I'm gonna do a very similar idea, but I'm just gonna start from 17 to 12 this time. Sort of go. Hopefully that's making sense. Let's go from a C major seven arpeggio. The next part I do, is kind of working through a, almost like an E minor arpeggio, I guess, just a three note thing and then a little bit sus i I'm doing a pull off from 19 to 15 on the first string, jumping to 17 to the second, back to 15 to the first. That's gonna sound like this. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing now, but start from 20. So after that arpeggio, all of those little shreds, uh, those four note groupings have a very similar pulse. So let's go from the start of that arpeggio. At the end of that, I've got sort of a, a semitone bend from 19, and then I've got a quick sort of double bend from 15 of the second string. Then I've got so what I've got here is a quick in and out bend with a really slow bend from 14 of the third. I pull off and then I come back with a pinch harmonic. At the end of that, I'm gonna work into this phrase. So what I'm doing here is I'm hammering 12 to 14 on the third, adding a full tone bend and then I'm tapping 19. And then I pull off that tap at the top so we can hear the down part and then you can give it a light vibrato at the bottom. Hopefully that's making sense. So it is a pretty epic section. Let's go right back to the start, do it all slowly. You might have to watch this a few times and then uh, we'll uh, have a look at the whole thing slow with some tabs as well. So let's gentlemen's pace our way through this.
One more time with some tabs. And that was the solo from We Stand by All That Remains. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, please click the links in the description box to my Facebook and my Patreon and my Udemy courses. If you want to join up with my Patreon, you get tabs to all of the lessons I teach, which is pretty rocking. Also have a book out, uh, Rock Guitar Mode Mastery. This is all about how to use modes in composition and improvisation. And I still have my first book out, which is uh, Ultimate Shred Machine, all about shredding, sweeping, legato, and tapping, and just getting your general shred chops up. So those books are both out now, and I have uh, courses very similar to both of them on Udemy if you want to check those out if you are not much of a reader. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the lesson. I'll catch you all very soon.